Sorry, but uh, one second this happened. Okay, we were discussing here. It is a renewable and biodegradable resource, degradable resources. When it decays, it will get vanishes. It is not like plastic. When the pl if it is a plastic, uh, it will not. It is a non uh, biodegradable. It will remain uh, as it is when once it is manufactured, right? So that is one more advantage. However, it also has some drawbacks of which the user must be aware. Uh, it is a natural material and is available in limited amount. Okay, uh, so some of the disadvantages are also that uh, there, but the user must know what are those. When uh, he when he is knowing the purpose of using the timber, then those disadvantages, if it is not affecting, then it is not a problem. Okay. Next, we have preservation. About the pre preserving the timber, how to preserve that, and what are the methods of preserving the uh, timber? Preservation of timber means protecting timber from fungi and insects attack, so that its life in, uh, is increased. Timber is to be seasoned well before application of preservatives. The following are the widely used preservatives. Okay, what is preservation? Preservation is nothing but when you have uh, when you are using a timber for your any commercial work. If you want it to come come for the long time, okay. If you are you want your uh, this one timber should be should work for long time, then it should be preserved. There are some methods. First is tar. Second is paints. Next we have chemical salts. Then we have uh, creosote. Then asco. Let us discuss these pre uh, preventions. First one is hot uh, tar. Hot cold tar is applied to timber with brush. The coating of tar protects the timber from the attack of fungi and insects. It is the cheapest way of protecting timber. Okay. So how you can do? You have to take your uh, this one timber and you have to apply a hot cold tar. Okay. You have to apply hot cold tar on the surface with the help of brush. So this coating of tar, okay, this coating of uh, hot cold tar protects the timber from the attack of fungi and insect. Okay, it will uh, act as a protective layer, layer, and it is the cheapest way of protecting timber or preserving the timber. Okay, main advantages, uh, main advantages of this method of preserving <laughs> preservation is that appearance. Uh, main disadvantage uh, is uh, of this method. Of uh, preservation is that the appearance is not good. After tar is applied, it is not possible to apply another attractive paint. Hence, uh, tarring is made only for the unimportant structures like fence poles. So, when you are applying this hot coal, uh, hot coal tar on the surface of the timber to protect it, no doubt you you are uh, uh, this one timber will be preserved. It will come for the long time. Uh, and it is a cheapest way also but the main disadvantage is that the appearance will not be good okay so we, uh, as you are applying the tar okay as you are applying the tar it uh, the your timber will not look good if it is your commercial product uh, like the doors windows uh, anything like that if you are applying tar on that how it will look right it is not at all it will not give a aesthetic view so this uh, method of preservation is uh, done only for unimportant work okay which is uh, not uh, used for uh, which is not used in a uh, aest uh, aesthetical way okay in those conditions only this type of preservation is used next we have paints two to three coats of oil paints are applied on clean surface of wood the paint protects the timber from moisture the paints is to be Applied from time to time. Okay, so by applying the uh, two to three coats of oil paints, also you can preserve the timber. Okay, then it will give a long life on the surface of wood. You have from time to time you have to keep applying uh, two to three uh, coats of the oil paint. Paint improves the uh, appearance of the timber. Solignum paint is a special paint which is which protects the timber from the attack of termites. Okay, so. As uh, compared to uh, this one tar, paint is a good way. It will look good also. In a tar, it is a cheap, a cheap way, but it will not. It is. It will not give aesthetic view. But paint, whichever whichever color may you may use, it will look good. Okay. So 
uh, if you, with the help of paints also you can preserve the timber next we have chem uh, chemical salt these are the preservatives may, made by uh, dissolving salts in water okay the salts used as copper sulfate masonry uh, ma uh, masonry chloride zinc chloride and sodium fluoride after treating uh, the timber with this chemical salt paint uh, paint and varnishes can be applied to get the good appearance okay so here with the help of these salts take uh, any of this salt copper sulfate masonry sulfate zinc uh, zinc chloride or sodium fluoride these uh, these salts you can take you can dissolve it in water then you apply it on the timber okay so then your uh, timber will get a protective layer and you can uh, uh, avoid the attack of fungi and uh, insects then upon that coat if you want a good aesthetic view you can apply the paint also on that to get a good appearance next we have creosote creosote oil is obtained by distillation of coal tar the seasoned timber is kept in a an air tight chamber and air is exhausted the then the creosote oil is pumped into the chamber at a at a pressure of 0.8 to 1 newton per mm square at a temperature of 50 degrees celsius after 1 to 2 hours timber is taken out of the chamber here what happens in creosote is okay you have to take the you have to get, get the distilled coal tar okay distilled coal tar you have to take and your seasoned timber you have to keep it in a uh, air tight chamber okay you have to keep it uh, a chamber will be there you have to put your uh, this one uh, uh, timber into that and uh, you have to exhaust all the air which is present in the uh, this one chamber okay you have to exhaust all the all the air after that you have to pump uh, this one creosote oil you have to pump into that with the pressure of 0.8 to 1 newton per mm square okay with that pressure you have to uh, pump creosote uh, creosote oil into that okay at uh, at the temperature of 50 degrees celsius okay at the uh, at the temperature of 50 degrees celsius you have to uh, pump creosote oil uh, with the pressure of 0.8 to 1 newton per mm square okay in that to in that chamber okay uh, air tight chamber uh, means uh, uh, this one air exhausted chamber then uh, you have to keep for 1 to 2 hours then that uh, this one timber can be taken out next we have asco this preservative is developed by the forest research institute dehradun uh, it uh, consists of one part one part by weight of hydrated arsenic pentoxide three parts by weight of copper sulfate and four parts by weight of potassium dichloride or sodium dichloride okay so how this preservative is made you have uh, this preservative first of all is made by the forest forest, uh, forest research institute okay uh, what how they can uh, they will do is you have to take 1% of the hydrated arsenic pentoxide then 3% of the uh, copper sulfate 4% of the potassium chloride or potassium dichromate or uh, sodium dichromate any one of this you have to take okay then this preservative is available in powder form okay when this is taken in this uh, percentages and it, this can be converted into a powder form by mixing six parts of this powder with 100 pa 100 parts of the water the solution is prepared this solution is then spread over the surface of the timber this treatment prevents the attack from the termites the surface may be painted to get desired appearance so here what happened uh, when you you get the powder okay you will get that powder ready madely available then 6% of the uh, this powder is to be added into the water okay if suppose you are uh, taking 100 liters of water around nearly 6 kg of the powder has to be added into that okay then with the help of that a solution will be pre uh, made okay a solution will be made with that powder and water and uh, it will be applied on the surface of the timber okay so this treatment prevents the attack of termites this termite we have seen in the insects at uh, one of the insect it is right there we have seen this termites so the surface may be painted to get the desired appearance means after application of this one you can apply the desired paint also to get the aesthetic view
नेक्स्ट वी हैव फिजिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ओके फर्स्ट वन स्पेसिफिक ग्रेविटी जनरली स्पेसिफिक ग्रेविटी एंड द मेजर एंड द मेजर स्ट्रेंथ प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द वुड आर डायरेक्टली रिलेटेड स्पेसिफिक ग्रेविटी फॉर द मेजर यूजली यूज स्ट्रक्चरल स्पीसीज रेंजिंग फ्रॉम रफली जीरो पॉइंट थ्री टू जीरो पॉइंट नाइन ओके so this see this specific gravity is very important to uh, know the other uh, physical properties of the any material if the specific gravity is good for that particular material then the other uh, properties will also be good uh, let it be a strength or uh, whatever those will be good okay so usually used the this one specific gravity should range from 0.3 to 0.9 for the timber a uh, higher allowable design value are assigned to those pieces having narrow growth rings okay or more rings per inch or more dense layer to per growth ring uh, and hence higher specific gravity okay so uh, remember in the previous explanation explanation i told you uh, if the growth of the tree is very fast okay if the uh, if the growth of the tree is very fast then the annular rings okay annular rings which are forming will be far to each other okay it will not be near it will be far to each other and uh, uh, that type of it wood will not be having more strength also okay hence that type of wood will not also have the good specific gravity okay so if uh, the annular rings are near to each other okay if those annular rings are near to each other it means that wood is having uh, good uh, is having more specific gravity and that is having more uh, strength also okay more strength and it is a late wood it means the age of the wood will be more okay so remember so if the annular rings are near to each other it means that uh, uh, the wood is having good specific gravity and good strength and it is having more age and if uh, those rings are far to each other it means that the age is less and the specific gravity is less and the strength also will be less next we have thermal properties or uh, temperature effects although wood is an uh, excellent heat insulator its strength and other properties are affected adversely by the exposure of exp uh, extended periods to the temperature above the uh, above 100 degree farad okay so our uh, timber or wood is having is a good insulator okay uh, so it will not transfer the heat, uh, heat in, in, uh, in its body soon okay uh, though it is a insulator but still it can it can get affected by the temperature if it is exposed for a long time for the temperature of around 100 degree farad the combination of high relative humidity or high temperature as in uh, un unventilated related attic areas can have serious effect on roof uh, sheeting materials and structural elements over over and above the potential for attack by decay organisms okay uh, so if you get a combination of uh, humidity and the high temperature okay so for your timber if you are getting the environment or the exposed area which is having more humidity and high temperature and the ventilation is very less so in those condition your timber will get, uh, seriously will get affected okay as the temperature is high and you are having a humidity also and the, there is no proper ventilation okay so outside air is not coming to coming and getting exposed to the that timber so in those condition because of high temperature and uh, high humidity and very less or no ventilation uh, this the decay of material happens simple remedies and cautions usually pre prevents any problem next we have environmental friendly okay timber is a environmental friendly material timber is the most environmentally responsible building material uh, timber uh, has low production energy requirement as it is uh, uh, and is a net carbon absorber okay so timber is a environmental fr friendly material okay and a uh, uh, timber has low production energy requirements okay for the energy requirement uh, energy production requirement timber is a comes at, uh, at the in a lower stage timber is a renewable resource well managed for, uh, forest 
produce timber on a sustained continuous basis with minimal uh, adverse effect on soil and water values okay so timber is a renewable resource right if it is used again the pl after plantation the timber can be uh, produced and it can be used in a well managed forest what happens in a sustained and continuous basis they will take the timber or they will take the wood from the forest okay so, in, so when they are taking the wood from the forest one thing that you have to keep in mind that it should not affect to the environment and you have to see that it is not affecting to the soil and water values of that local area okay keeping that thing in mind you can take the timber from the forest next we have in plentiful and growing supply timber is readily available readily available australia has significant forest resource uh, including a plantation estate covering more than 1.6 million hectares and the area is growing rapidly okay so timber is ready, readily available in the forest and if you want to take it from the forest those uh, two things we have to keep in mind that we have discussed in the previous slide okay we, uh, uh, if uh, the, that is satisfying uh, satisfying you can take the timber from the uh, forest okay in australia it is around uh, 1.6 million hectares of uh, forest is there and it is still increasing next we have next property next physical properties strong and lightweight timber is strong light and reliable uh, reliable uh, reliable reliable making the timber construction simple uh, simpler and safer than the steel or concrete construction a comparison with the steel or concrete shows that a uh, radiata pine structure timber for example has a strength for weight ratio 20 percent higher than the structural steel uh, and four to five timber better than the unreinforced concrete in the compre compression Okay, so timber is a strong and it is light in weight. So when we are comparing the uh, strength and the weight of the timber, uh, it is good material compared to the uh, steel as well as the concrete. I am not talking about the total strength, how much strength timber is having, how much uh, strength steel is having and how much strength concrete is having. Um, I am not talking in that way. I am talking a ratio, a ratio of strength to the uh, weight. Now, if any material is having less weight and high strength, then that material is a excellent material. Okay, so total how much weight it can take, how much load it can take, I'm not talking in that way. I'm just talking the ratio of the weight to the strength. Okay, any lightweight material having a more strength is an excellent material. Okay, so when we'll compare that ratio, uh, the timber or the wood is a excellent material a, or a good material when we are comparing uh, this one and uh, we, when we compare with the steel uh, uh, means a strength to for the weight ratio uh, it is uh, this one timber is 20 percent higher uh, uh, in ratio in ratio when we compare it is 20 percent uh, much better than the steel the lightweight structures possible in wood uh, confer flow on advantages in terms of reduced foundation cost reduced earthquake loading and easier transport building components and uh, complete uh, constructions are are simple and safe to erect uh, and cheaper to deconstruct or reuse at the end of the building is uh, useful life okay so when you are using uh, timber you can pr prepare a lightweight structure when you are constructing any structure with the help of uh, timber you can construct a lightweight structure okay and uh, the foundation cost will be low the structure cost will be low and uh, if the earthquake and is happening then the loading uh, and uh, if there will not be any big uh, disaster and the transportation of this timber is also easy okay so and this compare this uh, timber can be used for the components of building or uh, otherwise the full building also you can construct with the help of timber and the deconstruction or the demolition is also easy uh, when we are you are constructing with the uh, with timber as compared to the steel and con concrete okay after deconstruction also the timber can be used okay even after the deconstruction the timber you can be used uh, where the 
uh, this uh, same thing is same case is not there with the uh, steel and the concrete though we can uh, uh, use it uh, steel and concrete but it is not to the extent of the timber okay this is all about the uh, physical properties in tomorrow's uh, uh, class uh, let us start with the chemical properties okay we will try to finish this uh, timber topic in tomorrow's class